Good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Uh, tonight, we will have a dramatic reading of Aria to Capo. Uh, please enjoy the show. Pierrot, a macaroon! I cannot live without a macaroon! My only love, you are so intense! It's a Tuesday, Columbine. I'll kiss you if it's Tuesday. It is Wednesday, if you must know. Is this my artichoke or yours? Ah, Columbine, as if it mattered. Wednesday? Will it be Tuesday then, tomorrow, by any chance? Tomorrow will be... A oh, Piero, that isn't funny. I thought it was rather nice. Well, let us drink some wine and lose our heads and love each other. Piero, don't you love me now? La, what a woman. How should I know? Pour me some wine, I'll tell you presently. Piero, do you know? I think you drink too much. Yes, I dare say I do. Or else, too little. It's hard to tell, you see. I am always wanting a little more than what I have. Or else, a little less. There's something wrong, my dear. How many fingers have you? La, indeed, how should I know? It always takes me one hand to count the other with. It's too confusing. Why? Why? I am a student, Columbine, and search into all matters. La, indeed, then count yourself, then. No, or rather, nay. Tis of no consequence. I am become a painter. Suddenly, you impress me. Ah, yes, six orange bullseyes, four green pinwheels, and one magenta jelly roll. The title as follows. Woman taking in cheese from fire escape. Well, I like that. So that is all I've meant to you. Hush. All at once, I've become a pianist. I will imagine you in sound on a new scale without tonality. Vivace senza tempo senza tutto. Title, Uptown Express at six o'clock. Pour me a drink. Piero, you work too hard. You need a rest. Come out into the garden and sing me something sad. Don't stand so near me. I am become a socialist. I love humanity, but I hate people. Columbine, put on your mittens, child. Your hands are cold. My hands are not cold. Oh, I am sure they are. And you must have a shawl to wrap around you and sit by the fire. Why, I'll do no such thing. I am as hot as a spoon in a teacup. Columbine, I am a philanthropist. I know I am because I feel so restless. Do not scream or it'll be worse for you. Pierrot, my vinaigrettes! I cannot live without my vinaigrettes! My only love, you are so fundamental! How would you like to be an actress, Columbine, and I become your manager? Why, Pierrot, I can't act. Can't act, can't act! Listen to the woman. What's that to do with the price of furs? You're blonde, are you not? You have no education, have you? Can't act. You underrate yourself, my dear. Yes, I suppose I do. As for the rest, I'll teach you how to cry, and I'll teach you how to die, and other little tricks, and the house will love you. You'll be a star by five o'clock. That is, if you'll let me pay for your apartment. Let you? <laughs> well, that's a good one. <laughs> but why? But why? Well, as to that, my dear, I cannot say. It is a matter of form. Ugh. Well, Pierrot, I am getting tired of caviar and peacock's livers. Isn't there something else that people eat? Some humble vegetable that grows in the ground. Well, there are mushrooms. Mushrooms! That's so! I had forgotten. Mushrooms? Mushrooms? I cannot live with. Uh, how do you like this gown? Not much. I'm tired of gowns. 
that have the waist about the leg, the waist, and the hem around the bottom. And women with their breasts in front of them. Such an <laughs> eh. Where does one go from here? Here's a persimmon love. You always liked them. I am become a critic. There is nothing I can enjoy. However, set it aside, uh, I'll eat it between meals. Piro, do you know sometimes I think you're making fun of me? My love, by yon black moon you wrong us both. There isn't a sign of a moon, Piro. Of course not. There never was. Moon's just a word to swear by. Mutton. Now there's a thing you can lay your hands on and set the tooth in. Listen, Columbine. I always lied about the moon and you. Food is my only lust. Well, eat it then, for heaven's sake, and stop your silly noise. I haven't heard the clock tick for an hour. It's ticking all the same. If you were a fly, you would be dead by now. If I were a parrot, I could be talking for a thousand years. <laughs> Hello? What's this for God's sake? What's the matter? Say, what do you mean? Get off the stage, my friend, and pinch yourself. You're walking in your sleep. I never sleep. Well, anyhow, clear out. You don't belong here. Wait for your own scene. What do you think this is, a dress rehearsal? Sir, I am tired of waiting. I will wait no longer. Well, but what are you going to do? The scene is set for me. True, sir. Yet I can play the scene. Your scene is down for later. That too is true, sir. But I play it now. <sighs> oh, very well. Anyway, I am tired of black and white. At least, I think I am. Ugh. Yes, I am sure I am. I know what I'll do. I'll go and strum the moon. That's what I'll do. Unless, perhaps you never can tell, I may be, you know, tired of the moon. Well, anyway, I'll find Columbine, and when I find her, I will address her thus. Hey, pretty! <laughs> There's something in that. You, Thyrsis, Corridon, where are you? Sir, we are in our dressing room. Come out and do the scene. You are mocking us. The scene is down for later. That is true, but we will play it now. I am the scene. Sir, we are counting on this little hour. We said here is an hour in which to think a mighty thought and sing a trifling song and look at nothing. And behold, the hour, even as we spoke, was over and the act begun under... Sir, we are not in the fancy to play the play. We have thought to play it later. Besides, the, this is setting for a farce. Our scene requires a wall. We cannot build a wall of tissue paper. We cannot act a tragedy with comic properties. Try it and see. I think you'll find you can. One wall is like another. And regarding the matter of your insufficient mood, the important thing is that you speak the lines and make the gestures. Wherefore, I shall remain throughout and hold the prompt book. Are you ready? Sir, Sir we, we are, are always ready. ready. Play the play. How gently in the silence, Corridon, our sheep go up the bank. They crop a grass that's yellow where the sun is out and black where the clouds drag their shadows. Have you noticed how steadily, yet with what a slanting eye they graze? As if they thought of other things. What say you, Thyrsis? Do they question only where next to pull? Or do their far minds draw them thus vaguely north of west or south of east? <laughs> One cannot say. The black lamb wears its verdicts as if it were a garland. Have you noticed? <laughs> Purple and white and drinks the bitten grass as if it were a wad. I've noticed that. 
Let's say you Thyrsus, shall we make a song about a lamb that thought himself a shepherd? <laughs> why, yes. That is why. No. I've forgotten my line. I know a game worth two of that. Oh, yes. <clears throat> I know a game worth two of that. Let's gather rocks and build a wall between us uh, and say that over there belongs to me and over there to you. Why, very well. And say you may not come upon my side unless I say you may. Nor you on mine. And if you should, would be the worse for you. <laughs> Now there's a wall a man can see across, but not attempt to scale. An excellent wall. Come, let us separate and sit alone for a little while and lay a plot where we may outdo each other. Hey, Parate! My name is Columbine. Leave me alone. Corridan, after all, and in spite of the fact I started it myself, I do not like this so very much. What is the sense of saying I do not want you on my side of the wall? It's a silly game. I much prefer making that little song you spoke of making about the lamb, you know, that thought himself a shepherd. What do you say? I forgot the line. How do I know this isn't a trick? Oh, yeah. How do I know that this isn't a trick to get upon my land? Oh, Corridan, you know it's not a trick. I do not like the game, that's all. Come over here or let me come over there. It is a clever trick to get upon my land. Oh, very well. I think I never knew a sillier game. Oh, there's this. Just wait a minute. All the water is on your side of the wall and my sheep are thirsty. I hadn't thought of that. Oh, hadn't you? Why, what do you mean? What do I mean? I mean that I can play a game as well as you can. And if the pool is on my side, it's on my side. You mean you let the all? sheep, you mean you let the sheep go thirsty? Well, they're not my sheep. My sheep have water enough. <laughs> Your sheep? You're mad to call them yours. Yours, mine, they are all one flock. Thyrsus, you can't mean to keep the water from them just because they happen to be grazing on you over there instead of over here when we had set the wall up. Oh, can't I? Wait and see. And if you try to leave them over here, you'll wish you had. I wonder how it happens that all the water happens to be on your side. I'll say you probably had an eye out for a lot of the little things, my innocent friend. When I said, let us make a song, and you said, I know a game worth two of that. Hero, do you know, I think you must be getting old or fat or something stupid. Anyway, can't you put on some other kind of collar? You know as well as I do, Corridan, I never thought anything of the kind, don't you? I do not. Don't you? Oh, I suppose so. There's this, come on, let's drop this. What do you say? It's only a game. You know, we seem to be forgetting it's only a game. A pretty serious game it's getting to be when one of us is willing to let the sheep go thirsty for the sake of it. I know it, Corridan. But how do I know? Oh, yes. <clears throat> but. How do I know this isn't a trick to water your sheep and get the laugh on them? You can't know. That's the difficult thing about it. Of course, you can't be sure. You have to take my word for it. And I know just how you feel. But one of us has to take a risk, you see? Uh, this, or else this game goes on forever. It's terrible when you stop to think about it. Oh, dear sis, for the first time, I feel that this wall is actually a wall, a thing that's come up between us, shutting me, you away from me. I do not know you anymore. No, don't say that. Oh, Corden, I'm willing to drop it all if you will. Come on over and water your sheep. It's an ugly game. I hated it from the first. 
how did it start? I do not know. I don't know. I think I'm afraid of you. You're a stranger. I've never set eyes upon you before. Come over and water my sheep indeed. They'll be more thirsty than they are now before I bring them over into your land and having them mix up with yours and calling them yours and you trying to keep them. Lummy, I want my hat. Take it and go. Oh, take it and go, indeed. Is it my hat or isn't it? Is this my seat or not? Take it and go. Really, you know, you two are awfully funny. Corridan, my friend, I'm going to leave you now and whittle me a pipe or sing a song or go to sleep. When you have come to your senses, let me know. Why, what's this? Red stones and purple stones and stones full of gold. The ground is full of golden colored stones. I'm glad the wall was up before I found them. Otherwise I would have had to share. I mean, as it is, they all belong to me. Unless none here, none there, none here. <laughs> they all belong to me. Hmm. How curious. I thought the little black lamb came up and licked my hair. I saw the wool about its neck as plain as anything. It must have been a dream. The little black lamb is on the other side of the wall. I'm sure. Hello. What's that you got there, Corridan? Jewels. J Jewels? <laughs> And wherever did you get them? Oh, um, <laughs> over here. Uh, you mean to say you found them by digging in the ground for them? No, Thyrsus. By digging down for water for my sheep. Corridan, come to the wall a minute, will you? I want to talk to you. I haven't got the time. I'm making a necklace of red stones. I'll give you all the water that you want for one of those red stones, if it's a good one. Water? What for? What do I want of water? Why, for your sheep. My sheep? I'm not a shepherd. Your sheep are dying of thirst. And haven't I told you I can't be bothered by a few by untidy brown sheep full of burdocks? I'm a merchant. That's what I am. And if I set my mind to it, I could be an emperor. <laughs> Wouldn't I be a fool to spend my time watching a flock of sheep go up a hill when I have these to play with? When I have these to think about? I can't make up my mind to whether to buy a city and have a thousand beautiful girls to bathe me and be happy until I die. <laughs> or build a bridge and name it the Bridge of Corydon and be remembered after all, after I'm dead. Corydon, come to the wall, won't you? I want to tell you something. Hush, be off, go, finish your nap, I tell you. Gordon, listen, if you don't want your sheep, give them to me. Be off, go finish your nap. A red one, ooh, a blue one, and another red one, and a purple one. Give you my sheep, did you say? Come, come, what do you take me for, fool? I've got a lot of thinking to do, and while I'm thinking, the sheep might as well be over here as over there. A blue one, a red one. But they will die. And a green one and a couple of white ones for a change. Maybe I have some jewels on my side. And another green one. <laughs> Maybe, but I don't think so. You see, this rock isn't so very wide. It stops before it gets to the wall. It does seem to go quite deep, however. I see. Look, Pierrot, there's the moon. Nonsense. I see. Oh, sing me an old song, Pierrot, something I can remember. Columbine. 
your mind is made of crumbs, like in a scallop of oysters. First a layer of crumbs, and then an oystery taste, and then a layer of crumbs. I find no jewels, but I wonder what the root of this black weed would do to a man if he should taste it. I've seen a sheep die with half the stalk drooling from its mouth. Could be a speedy remedy, I should think, for a festered pride and a feverish ambition. It has a curious root. I think I'll hack it into little pieces. First, I'll get me a drink, and then I'll hack that root into little pieces as small as dust and see what the color is inside. pool is very clear. I see a shepherd standing on the brink with a red cloak about him and a black weed in his hand. Tis I. Hello? What are you doing, Thyrsis? Digging for gold. I'll give you all the gold you want if you give me a bowl of water. If all you want's not too much, that is to say. Oh, so you changed your mind. It's different, isn't it, when you want a drink of water yourself? Of course it is. Well, let me see. A bowl of water. Come back in an hour. I'm busy now. Oh, there's just give me a bowl of water and I'll fill the bowl with jewels and bring it back. Be off. I'm busy now. <sighs> Wait. Pick me out the finest stones you have. I'll bring you a drink of water presently. Bowl of jewels is a lot of jewels. I wonder if this has a bitter taste. There's sure to be a stone or two among them that I've grown particularly fond of, pouring them from one hand into the other. <laughs> I hope it doesn't taste too bitter, just at first. A bowl of jewels is far too many jewels to give away and not get back ever again. I don't believe he'll notice. He's too thirsty. He'll gulp it down and never notice. There ought to be a way to get them back again. I, I, I could give him a necklace and snatch it back after I've drunk the water, I suppose. Why, as for that, of course, a necklace. <laughs> Come get your bowl of water, Corydon. Oh, very good. And as for such a gift as that, I'll give you more than a bowl of unsaid stones. I'll give you three long necklaces, my friend. Come closer. Here they are. I'll hold the bowl until you've drunk it all. Then hold it steady. For every drop you spill, I'll have a stone back out of this chain. I shall not spill a drop. <clears throat> Don't pull the strings so tight. You're spilling the water. You've had enough. Stop pulling the strings so tight. Why, that's not tight at all. How's this? You're strangling me. Gordon, it's only a game, and you're strangling me. So it's only a game, is it? Yet I believe you poisoned me in earnest. It's only a game. You've poisoned me in earnest. I feel so cold. <coughs> so cold. This is a very silly game. Why do we play it? Let, let us not play this game a minute more. Let's make a song, a little song 
a pot of lamb? I'm coming over the wall no matter what you say. I want to be near you. Oridan gropes his way with arms wide before him. He strides through the frail wall without knowing it and continues seeking for the wall straight across the stage. Where's the wall? He gropes his way back and stands very near Thyrsus without seeing him. There isn't any wall, I think. He takes a step forward. His foot touches Thyrsus' body and he falls down beside him. Thyrsus, where's your cloak? Just give me a bit of your cloak. He draws a corner of Thyrsus' cloak over his shoulders, falls across his body, and dies. Break the scene. Don't puff so, Columbine. Lord, what a mess! This stage, the set is in. If there's one thing I hate above everything else, even more than getting my feet wet, it's clutter. He might as well have at least left the stage the way he found it, don't you say so, Piero? Well, I don't know. I think it rather diverting the way it is. <sighs> Shall we begin? Oh, oh my God, what is that there under the table? It is the bodies of the two shepherds from the other play. How curious to strangle him like that with colored paper ribbons. Yes, and yet I dare say he is just as dead. <coughs> Cathartis! Come drag these bodies out of here. We can't sit down and eat with two dead bodies lying under the table. The audience wouldn't stand for it. What makes you think so? Pull down the tablecloth on the other side and hide them from the house and play the farce. The audience will forget. That's so. Give me a hand here, Columbine. Perrault and Columbine pull down the table cover in such a way that the two bodies are hidden from the house. Perrault, a macaroon! I cannot live without a macaroon! My only love, you are so intense! It's a Tuesday, Columbine. I'll kiss you if it's Tuesday. It is Wednesday, if you must know. Is this my artichoke or yours? Ah, Columbine, as if it mattered. Wednesday. Will it be Tuesday then tomorrow, by any chance? Thank you, everyone, for joining us this evening. Uh, thank you so much for coming out. A big thank you to all of our talented performers, and to the 48 Blocks staff for organizing this. And also a thank you as well to Professor Mark Mallett and David Roselle uh, for consulting on us with this play. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of the festival. <laughs>